Good morning, students. Uh, we are doing, uh, there is something called as resistance and parallel. Okay, this is the entire apparatus. What is this apparatus talking about? To begin with here, this is nothing but called as battery. You can see that this is the red end and this is the black end. And this red is nothing but the battery. The red end is going to be connected. Positive end will be connected here. And this is negative end is connected. And then this is connected with a switch. The other end of the switch is connected to this is something called as millimeter. Millimeter which measures current. Other end of the millimeter is connected here. Now this is a common point and this common point we have got three wires going. So one wire is going to this resistance R1, the other wire is going to resistance R2 and one wire here it is going and it is connected to the voltmeter which you can see. So here is how much current, now the current is coming here and the current gets divided here. The current which goes here is nothing but I1 and to measure this current we have got a millimeter here. So how much is the current is going to R2? To measure that we have got a one more millimeter here so this millimeter is going to measure the current which is going to r2 and this millimeter is going to measure the current which is going to r1 now here is the voltmeter because we need to connect to see the voltmeter how much is the potential difference we have set now again you will see that again you'll have a three wire three wires coming here and this is the common point of that how we had a common point here the similarly we have the common point b and here also these three resistances are connected. You can see that here R1 is connected, this is R2 is connected and here is the voltmeter which is connected. So these are the two common points which we have. Okay. So here you can say that R1 and R2 they are connected parallel to each other. R1 is parallel to R2 and this is the two common points which we have. Okay. Now let us see how to make connections. Again we have got there is something called as a battery eliminator. Okay. This is written as one amp battery eliminator. So this is one ampere current it can carry maximum one ampere current it can carry okay now i'm going to show you how to make connections over here and then we'll proceed with the readings to start with connections so connections students let us see now you can see this battery and this is the black end and this is the red end this is negative and this is positive so negative here this is connected to negative end of this and the positive of this is connected to the positive of this okay so the battery is connected here only one connection is there no other connection need to be made only you, know, you need to connect battery that's it so the battery is connected here so this is the connection now all other connections are already made so students you don't need to make any more connections here all right so we are done with the connections now what we'll do is we are going to switch this on the moment i switch on this here you can see that this is a switch the moment i switch on here you can see that this glows means the current starts flowing here if the current flows here you have got a switch here now you you have to switch this on the moment you switch on you will see that some deflections are there if you switch off the deflection is here the moment you switch on the deflections will be seen it means we have to switch this on now when we switch it on what we have to do is nothing but we have to set our voltmeter to some value so i've got voltmeter you can see the readings here i've got 0 2 4 6 8 and so on what i'm going to do is i'm going to connect i'm going to uh, set my voltmeter reading to one fixed value now you can see that why the deflection is coming might be some connections are loose that is why you can see that this is dropping down too okay so uh, we will strengthen this connections and then we'll see that okay now you can see that the connection is proper so there is no deflection out there what we'll do is nothing but we will take this voltmeter reading to a constant value so what i do is i will select one value out of this so what i do is i select this four so right now it is before or two it is in between two and four so i'm going to take it to four with the help of rehostat now with the help of rehostat i'm going to move this okay this is the rehostat and i'm going to move and if you can see that here here you can see that if i'm moving this you will see there's some deflection out there okay so i'm moving this and you can see that it is going going and it is going to four you can see that here it is on four now the moment i'm moving and it is going to the going to four So uh, this reading is on 4, again there is a deflection means uh, there is some loose connections here, we will check all the loose connections here, if at all any, okay, yeah, uh, we checked all the connections now, they are all tight, now you can see that this is on 4, so you can see that this value is on 4 exactly, yes, my voltmeter reading is set now, okay, what we have to do is nothing but we have to see what is by I1. What I'm going to do is nothing but I'm going to check now this is constant this will be on 4 only so you can see that this is on 4 now I'm going to check my I1 I will check my I2 
then what I'm going to do is I'm going to do I1 plus I2 and I should get this value because this current is only getting divided in voltmeter what happens potential difference remains same whereas the current gets divided so this current is only getting divided so when it is getting divided so whatever I get I1 as and whatever I get I2 as when I add I1 plus I2 I should get this I so let us see the readings here how much is I1 and how much is I2 okay so first we'll see that potential difference should be on 4 volt okay we check this potential difference should be on 4 volt only so what we can see is uh, okay we'll see that our uh, potential difference is on 4 volt you can see the reading here it is on 4 volt that time i'm going to note my i1 okay and then i'm going to note it uh, my i2 okay and then i'm going to add i1 plus i2 and i will get i so okay before that we have to fill here uh, let's come to the journal point here we have got observations least count and zero errors so as we know that there is no zero error we know that here okay we have already informed you or we already know that key if there is zero error means that when the line coincide with the zero so suppose i switch off here if this this red line is coinciding with the zero means there is no zero error you can see that here the red line is coinciding with the zero so there is no zero error okay you can see this you can see that here it is coinciding with zero so there is no zero error here also here also you can see that zero is coinciding uh, this needle is coinciding with the zero so no zero error here also it is no zero error so zero error is going to be here as when you are writing zero error so you have to put uh, dash and this is also dash okay least count so as we already know how to calculate least count so let us start least count already we know that i have think we have done it last time and uh, again i need to take you to there and that paper you can see that here is we got least count to uh, zero then got 50 then got 100 150 200 250 and so on so 0 to 50 there are 10 lines 50 to 100 there are 10 lines and so on same goes here this millimeter also this millimeter also the same thing is happening so what i am going to show you how to work it out you check here last time we did it again i have it so i have just drawn this up and here i have put a zero and uh, from zero you can see that here is the 10 lines that is uh, if you count here the 10th line is 50 from here if you count the 10th line is 100 so what least how to calculate this count 10 lines stand for 50 milliampere so one line will stand for how many that's x so it is 10x into 5, 50 into 1 and that's going to be x is equals to 50 upon 10 and that comes to 5 milliampere so our least count is going to be here is how much it is 5 milliampere okay and this is again you have to correct it it is going to be milliampere milliampere and voltmeter again the same thing is here also voltmeter calibration you can see that 0 2 4 6 8 10 and so on so here is again we have shown you the least count how to take it out voltmeter 0 2 4 and 6 loud, no, <coughs> look at this here <coughs> from 0 to 2 you got uh, 10 lines here so 10 lines stand for 2 volt one line stand for how much it is going to be x so if i cross multiply 10x is equals to 2 into 1 so x is equals to 2 upon 10 and then that comes to how much 0 0.2 volt so the least count is how much it has become 0 0.2 volt so let's write here the least count is 0 0.2 volt 0 0.2 volt so we have written the least count also now okay now let us write down the readings here as we have seen that uh, here the voltmeter reading is on 4 okay if i switch on here it is on 4 the voltmeter reading is on 4 volt so what i'm going to do is i'm going to keep this here is voltmeter reading i'm going to write down as 4 volt 4 volt okay as my potential difference remains constant so for r2 also it is going to be 4 volt so this is how much it become 4000 millivolt this is also become 4000 millivolt okay now we we'll see here how much is the i1 and i2 so check it here if look at this i1 and note down here so this is i1 if you note down this is coinciding which line check here if you can see that it is 50 so i1 is to it is coinciding with 50 here 
so what is your reading here going to be it is going to be 50 milli ampere and what is the reading here you can see one two three four five six seventh line it is coinciding on so seventh line it is coinciding so seven fives are because each line here is seventh line is coinciding and least count is five so seven fives are how much 35 milliampere so this is going to be how much 35 milliampere we can check again yeah let's check it again which reading it is given given here okay so this is 50 and now here if if i look at this this is on which line it is one two three four five one two three four five sixth line six and uh, this is if i look at here it is on sixth line so this is on sixth line here so six uh, six five thirty this is 50 and this is going to be 1 2 3 4 5 6 6 so it is going to be 30 not 35 so I just make it as 30 30 milliampere okay corrected we don't need because both are in millivolt so I know now what I'm going to do is okay now what we'll do is we'll do this calculations here okay uh, 4000 V V is 4000 here divided by this is 50 so let's divide this 5 ones are 5 eights are and this has become 80 so you got 80 ohm now again here is 4000 divided by 30 so shunya shunya chu 3 ones are 3 threes are 9 and 133.33 so you have got 133.33 oh this is what our reading is okay now what we have to do is the main is calculation here okay this main calculation most of you are not able to do so i'm going to show you the how to do this calculation so this is very important so please have a look at this as we've given 1 upon rp so i'll write 1 upon rp is equals to 1 upon r1 so here is 1 upon r1 now look at this here r1 you got 80 but i'm not going to write 80 i'm going to write on 4000 upon 50 so it is a four, i write 4000 upon i write 50 plus 1 upon r2 so 1 upon r2 r2 is 4000 upon 30 so i will write 4000 upon 30 if i solve this i get 50 upon 4000 plus i just reverse this i get 30 upon 4000 so now denominator is same so what is happening is this is 4000 and this is 50 plus 30 is got 80 so now 1 upon rp is 80 so 1 upon rp is equals to 80 upon 4000 but we want a rp no so rp is equals to take reciprocal so it is going to be 4000 divided by 80 shunya shunya chu 8 ones are 8 fives are so it is going to be 50 now so we got 50 ohm our rp ka value has become 50 ohm here so now let's fill this here r1 how much is r1 we have got we got r1 as 80 we got r2 as 133.33 then rp is how much we got we got 50 ohm okay so this one upon r r1 plus one upon r2 this we got as 80 upon 400 and the total resistance 4000 okay not 400 but then 4000 and the final value we got as 50 ohm and finally we are done with the calculation my dear you get scared of this resistance and parallel but you can see that how simple experiment is this okay you just have to take a reading and put it there in the in the record the in the observation table and do the calculation and you're done with this but most of you get scared because you do not remember the things so please when you're uh, seeing this video or watching this video please do make a note of all the things how to make the connections 
how many connections are made and how to take down the observations once you're done with that i'm telling you that this this resistance in parallel the experiment is a peanut for you okay thank you so much and uh, we'll watch for wait for the next video and that's nothing but to how to find out the focal length thank you very much